Ladies and gents, I'm Rusu Jibrex and this is 1000 km cable to the stars, the skyhook for the channel Kazgazat in a nutshell. Skyhook? I don't know what this is. Is this one of those things, uh, you know, there's some kind of elevator from, I don't know, from uh, the ground, earth, you know, from earth to all the way to, I guess, you know, some space station. So it's easier to go to space station or something. Is this that? I don't know. I don't know what Skyhook is, but yeah, it's gonna be fun. Getting to space is incredibly hard, expensive and needs a lot of research. I think it is that, right? A more efficient way to get there is a skyhook or a space tether. An ever-rotating cable with a counterweight and catapult spaceship from Earth orbit into the depths of space. What? No, this is different. It's not that this is different. Look at that. I don't know about skyhook. Huh. I've never heard of this. That's surprising, but okay. Remember, well, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe, check out the reaction, and there's a link in the description, check out the cards, well, please check out the end cards, and yeah, let's go this one. Getting to space is hard. Right now, it's like going up a mountain on a unicycle with a backpack full of explosives. Incredibly slow, you can't transport a lot of stuff, and you might die. A rocket needs to reach a velocity of about 40,000 kilometers an hour to escape from Earth. To get to that speed, rockets are mostly containers for fuel with a tiny tip of payload. This is bad if you want to go to other planets because you need a lot of heavy stuff if you want to survive and maybe even come back. So is there a way to get to space with less fuel and more? Yeah, and it's also it's not as simple because see, if you want to move a heavy load onto the space, basically you have to have a lot of fuel. But that fuel also has a weight. So you need fuel for that fuel. So, you know, there's a formula that you have to use to, you know, create a large, uh, you know, ship for the whatever weight you want to carry. So it's not as simple as just if you add a few pounds here and there, like, you know, uh, a ton of weight here and there. So you can just have to add few of the fuel there. No, the more fuel you add, even more greater. Uh, scale of fuel you have to add to you know counter that basically because of, you know fuel also has weight now that weight you have to pull up you know all the way to uh, I guess to the space more payload a nice thing that solved most of our transport problems on earth is what you call infrastructure whether it's roads for cars, ports for ships, or rails for trains, we've made it easier to get to places. We can apply the same solution to space travel. Space infrastructure will make getting into orbit and out to the moon, Mars, and beyond easier and cheaper. Great, but what exactly is space infrastructure? Unlike an Earth space elevator, which is currently science fiction, there is a simple yet promising technology. Ah, so th that's. Uh, I was thinking he was going to talk about Earth space elevator at first, which he's saying is fiction. But no, this is this weird rotating skyhook thing that's supposed to, you know, propel space you know, ships to, I guess, deeper space. Huh. That does not require new science, magic materials, or huge investments, and that has been tested successfully in orbit already. A cable and a weight, known as a tether. The concept is so simple, it's surprising. What if we put tethers hundreds or thousands of kilometers long into space and had spacecraft use them as ladders to climb to higher altitudes and gain speed? This concept is known as the skyhook. It works even better if we make it spin. A counterweight holds a long cable in place while it rotates around a circle. A rotating tether slows down its tip relative to the ground at the bottom and speeds it up at the top like a catapult. This means that you can transfer energy from the tether and get a massive boost when released, more or less for free, equal to twice the tether's rotation velocity. Ah, so the slingshot effect that, uh, you know, uh, already NASA uses and, you know, space engines uses around the planets, basically. Uh, you know, how Voyager 1 did that with all the different planets while the way out from the solar system yeah so yeah this is smart i can see that working but you know there is no you know uh, energy energy generation here right it's uh, it's using momentum to transfer energy so wouldn't it uh, you know 
the more space ships uh, this thing shot basically you know throws it into the space deeper space the more you know the more rotating speed slows down because now that speed is getting transferred to this uh, you know the rocket space uh, you know ships whatever so only there will be point where it i guess you know come to us you know still basically that would happen right i don't know Specialized fibers already exist that can survive the extraordinary stresses a skyhook would be faced with. To protect against cuts and collisions from debris and meteorites, we can thread our tether into a web of redundant fibers. Since our skyhook would pass over the same spot many times a day, this would allow small reusable shuttles to catch up with it. Of course, it's not that easy. At its lowest point, the tether's tip is dashing through the atmosphere at around 12,000 kilometers per hour. Oh shit, it would be more difficult to catch this as well. First of all, you know, this tether cannot be so low, it would burn up. But whatever height uh, th this would be, 12,000 km per hour, you know, it would be, it would have to be a really, you know, a perfect operation to, I guess, you know, attach to this, whatever ship you throw at it. Because of Earth's atmosphere, we can't lower the sky hook too much or it will get too hot from air friction. So it will dip to a height of 80 to 150 kilometers and no lower. To match this, we'll need specialized spacecraft that can get to the tether. While this isn't exactly easy, it's still much cheaper than getting a big tin can filled with rocket fuel to go 40,000 kilometers an hour. Catching the tip will be a challenge too. There's only a short time window of 60 to 90 seconds to find a tiny thing in the sky moving at Mark 12. To make this easier, the tip could have a sort of fishing line, a kilometer long. Wait a minute, is this the first thing that he proposed where there's an elevator here, where it's still? Or is this the rotating thing? Because if it's the still thing, where there's a literal elevator pulling it, and it's this hard, if it's a rotating thing, it would be even more faster, right? That would be even more difficult. With a navigation drone that helps the spacecraft connect. Another challenge is keeping our skyhook in orbit. As more and more ships latch onto it and pull themselves up, they use up the momentum that keeps it in place. If we don't do anything, it will slow down and crash into the atmosphere. And See, here, that's what I was talking about. Wouldn't it slow down because it's transferring momentum, transferring energy, basically? We can cheat the universe a bit. The skyhook is a battery of orbital energy. It's possible to balance the payloads coming in and being sent off. Arriving ships bring uh. humans and materials home to Earth, add energy to the tether, which it can give to other ships departing into space. This way, the tether doesn't lose any energy. So basically, when space becomes so accessible, it's like a public transport type of thing, this would become crucial, right? You don't need massive rockets to send things in space. This would be this would make uh, you know space more accessible. Like say you know uh, there's a colony on Mars now you know people to you know go from that's like how people go from different continents to continents right now. People go from Earth to Mars just like that. There's so many flights going in and out. So this would become crucial. No rocket needed. Uh, you know good enough plane that can reach that height, 25 kilometers from the ground up. And from there, just use tether to, you know, go all the way to Mars. And there is another tether there on the Mars too, and vice versa. That would work. So flights coming in, flights going out, it would balance it out, I guess. The more we use it, the cheaper it gets. If we're still losing energy with each boost, we can recover it with small electric or chemical engines that regularly correct the tether's position. Yeah, I mean, you know, solar panel. Solar is easily accessible, so why not? A set of tethers, one around Earth and one around Mars, could make trips between the planets fast, straightforward and low cost compared to rockets. The Earth tether would sit in low Earth orbit to grab people and payloads and fling them off to Mars. The Mars tether catches them and slows them down for a landing on the surface. In the opposite direction, the tether could pick up a vehicle traveling through Mars's thin atmosphere at only about 1,000 kilometers an hour, not much faster than our airliners on Earth, and fling it back to Earth to be caught and lowered down. The tethers could shorten trips between both planets from nine months down to five or even three, and reduce the scale of the rockets required by between 84 and 96%. Even better, people may be able to travel in relative luxury as we could afford to invest in passenger comfort. Tether travel would be first-class seats to Mars. Yeah. Together, tethers around Earth and Mars could provide the rapid and cost-efficient transportation backbone that would make space travel affordable. But let's go further. 
Starting from low Mars orbit, a tether could boost ships to the asteroid belt. The first craft sent to a new asteroid would need rockets to slow down at its destination. Subsequent arrivals might find a tether waiting to catch them and send them back for free. Yeah. Getting to asteroids cheaply is a major factor in opening up the resources of the solar system. Precious metals and valuable minerals could be delivered to Mars just weeks after they were... When you think about it, this is one of the first technology that, you know, there should be when space becomes more accessible because one thing is the biggest constants, you know, uh, used by NASA, which is a slingshot effect from planets. So using gravity to gain energy and, you know, gain speed. So why not use that for everything in space? I mean, that is a first thought and first thought of technology anybody should have. So this is not one of those things that just somebody thought of and it's just stupid. Maybe it would work, maybe it would not. No, NASA already uses slingshot effect every time. That is the first thing they use when they want to go at any large distances. So this, this basically, this sky who creates this thing sort of effect everywhere, wherever there's gravity at play. So yeah, they would work, why not? Cut out of their asteroid. They would be the perfect building blocks for our interplanetary civilization. But why stop here? Mars moons are very convenient. No other moons in the solar system orbit that close to their planet. Phobos is so heavy that we don't need to worry about slowing it down, making it the perfect attachment point for super tethers just under 6,000 kilometers long. The lower tip would fly just over the surface of Mars and be very easy to catch. The upper tip can fling ships all the way to Jupiter and Saturn. The same super tether can also bring the inner solar system closer. Venus and Mercury are a single swing away. Unlike Mars, they're bursting with solar energy and are rich in minerals. In the long term, nothing is stopping humanity from constructing a zero propellant transport network for the terrestrial planets centered on the Martian moons. Tethers are a comparably cheap and sustainable solution to making space travel affordable and the rest of the solar system accessible for exploitation and exploration. Considering that we have the technology to build them today, there's really no good excuse to wait any longer. Parts of the solar system are far away, but they could be very close. Speaking of stuff that's hard to reach, but doesn't have to be, knowledge. Yeah, people go to brain.org for slash not and support this channel. So yeah, space, very futuristic, very promising. Which technology are you going to use? Hmm, uh, you know, black hole, the, the powered, uh, some kind of an engine, uh, new powered engines, you know, uh, massive jets or something. No, no, simple tethers, ropes, basically. Yeah. <laughs> it feels stupid, but if it works, it works, I guess. Simplicity works, why not? Imagine that everybody just thinking, hmm, which kind of a massive drive people are going to use for the future? Is it going to be gas powered? No. Is it going to be, you know, nuclear power? No. Maybe black hole, you know, drives or something like that. Ah, no, it's tethers. Tethers and gravity. There you go. I feel like, you know, this would be the realistic thing that they actually do because this will feel real close to home because they're already doing that. So why not actually, you know, do this? It's, it's cheap, it's easier, why not? Efficiency matters the most, so I guess this would work. Alright people, that was Skyhook by the channel because that in a nutshell. If you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe. Check out the reaction, there's a link in the description. Check out the cards, we'll play, check out the end cards and I'll see you next time.